Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to start with an unboxing of the 2018 calendar year Get to Work book. This just arrived on my porch today and you guys said you like unboxings. So I wanted to leave it intact and show you what it looked like because I love the Get to Work book tape. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. She wraps it with her Get to Work book tape, which I think is awesome, and in a box that's just the right size that fits the planner. Okay guys, it probably shouldn't have taken me that long to get it open, but apparently it takes me a little while to figure out boxes. Then you open it and you have all your goodies wrapped like this inside. Let's take a look how it comes. You have your big things happen one day at a time little card with her get to work book and Elise Joy Inc. on the back who is the maker, designer, founder, creator of Get to Work book. And then a little thank you card from Elise. And I just, I love all her slogans and her little, um, I don't know what you call them, motivational um, little things. So she talks right here. I really like this. I don't remember this coming with the 2017 book. So this is the 2018 calendar yearbook I was sent to review. And um, in here, you have 12 monthly motivational um, things that are perforated on cardstock. You can tear out. I will show you inside. But she goes into each one because she made these up and she designs them, 12 new ones for each year. So she goes into each one and explains um, just kind of like her idea about that. Like, I'll just read you one. The only thing you can control is when you start. The only thing you can control is when you start is true. That idea you have. Get rolling on it as soon as possible. It might fail, it might fly, but you'll never know until you get started. So she talks about each one of those slogans and I love that. Then she has an awesome new sticker this year. Before I cut into it, even with the sound, I gotta show you. This is for the goal setters, list makers, dreamers, planners, learners, doers, and goal reachers. Let's get to work. I love that sticker. Um. I wish it just came as a sticker so I could keep it and like stick it somewhere. Okay, so the get work the get to work book was wrapped really nicely. No damage, um, nothing. It looks brand new and pristine. If you have followed me, you know that I also reviewed her 2017 Get to Work book last year, and I have several videos on that book and also how I used it, and there's not many changes at all. Um, there's only one or two things that I can tell you that's different in the 2018 book, uh, but we will compare those just a teeny bit too. Um but first, we're going to go through the whole 2018 Get to Work book for those that are new to Get to Work book and want to see the whole thing and want to see what the 2018 looks like. So Get to Work book, you can go to gettoworkbook.com um, is where you get it. You can get this black chipboard cover or she has a like brownish, like, oh, what do you call it? I should have looked it up, like paper sack kind of look chipboard cover. I really like that one too. I would have her chipboard cover is one of the hardest. Well, I won't even say one of the. It is the hardest um, and most unbendable chipboard cover that I have reviewed in any planner. So I will say that. It is super hard. And so is the back cover. And so when you want to turn this baby over and like use it to write on one of your weeks here. 
um, I'm just trying to turn to a weekly spread. When you want to do that, I mean, you have a hard, hard writing surface to carry around. You can carry this thing around writing in your hand, on your lap, on the go. The cover is great for that. I love her cover. Her O-rings are some of the very best. I always say this in my videos. Um, Emily Lay's O-rings and get to book and get to work book O-rings are the two O-rings that have never given me any problems. They always work seamlessly, have absolutely no issue, and hold up under everything. They they come with no issue and they continue with no issue. So Get to Work Book and Emily Lay are the only two O-rings, honestly, that never give me any problems. And I have reviewed a lot of planners with O-rings. So there's that. Um, her rings are black, I believe, even in the brown chipboard cover. So they're they're the same. And I will put the price in here. I cannot remember. I think it's about $54 full price. If you want to try to get a bargain, follow her on Instagram. And you can see when she does sales and specials. And she'll run specials on shipping and such like that. So follow her if you're interested. All right, you open this planner. And you just have the title page, Get to Workbook. I just love her clean, crisp look. Her paper is made from post-consumer recycled paper. And I love that, that she cares about the environment. It is not the thickest planner paper, but it is not super thin. It holds up really well under pen. Um, there is some ghosting, but not, not anything that would veer me from not buying this planner. Um, I have this featured in my pen test video. I will try to remember to link that below, but if I don't, you can go uh, to my channel and my te pen test video as under my planner playlist, and you can see that. I will also show you how the pen holds up and the get to work book. I will show you that. You have a place for name and contact over here. Um, I like what she says right here. This get to work book is a day planner plus a goal setting journal. Because let's get real, the only way to make progress on your big goals is to take things one day at a time. It sadly can't do the work for you, but it can help you do the work. So go, get to work. I love that. Um, Elise also has a podcast, which is an awesome podcast. So that's something to know. Her paper this year looks whiter to me and crisper to me than last year in 2017. And her black ink looks darker. And I will show you that comparison from last year. I like the look of it. I like that. Okay, so you open it up and it says big things happen one day at a time. That's like one of her slogans. I love it. I love it. Um, then you have 2018 at a glance. This is for 2018 calendar year. So you have every month, the first six months of the year on this side, then the last six months of the year on this side. You can use this for anything you want. I like how it's open-ended. It just says at a glance. You know, you could use it for the typical birthdays and anniversaries. You could use it for big bills due, which is what I use my at a glance and my planner for right now. I use it for the big bills that are not um, every month. The bills that are like car insurance twice a year, life insurance once a year, HOA dues twice a year, that type of thing. So I know when those big bills are coming. So I can kind of see that. Um, but you could use it for goals. You could use it for big family events. I mean, you can use it for anything. I like the way this is laid out. That is one of my favorite things about her book is that it is just laid out so open, I guess. So open that it just screams to you to make it your own, to do what you need to with it. I love how the pages just say to me, like, write in me make me your own, get to work. They really give me that feeling. And that's one thing I just love about this book. This page is reflect and goal set. So she has this for every month. Last month's wins, still in progress, to let go of, to think on, to work on, to complete. I love that. For a month reflection, I just like the categories that she's picked. They make sense to me. They would work for me. They would motivate me to fill them in. I actually haven't ever used this section of her planner before, but if I was using this planner for my daily planner, that would, 
I would totally use those. Also, let me point this out before I forget. Her tabs are so easy to find because she makes the month extra short, so they just all go in order, and you can easily, they are so big and hard, her tabs. I mean, you can just flip to any month. Like, I mean, it is not hard to find your month. And I love that her tab is on the monthly calendar itself. So when you flip to it, you are on your monthly layout. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that planners that don't do that are, that's just a pet peeve of mine. That's just a personal thing. Some people wouldn't care, but I really like my tabs to open to the exact month. These tabs are super easy to find and super easy to open. Okay, so every month, that's what I was showing you. We have our reflect and goal set. Then every month she also gives you this amazing little motivational page with a slogan that she herself has designed on here. You have the month at a glance right down here and then you have this month is all about. Then you have your slogan for that month. These pages are really hard cardstock and they are perforated. So they are easy to tear out if you choose to. Of course you don't have to but they are made perforated so you can tear them out. You can either set them on an easel at your desk, hang them up in your office, or you can leave them here. But I love the fact that you have that choice. So her January is get your goals on paper. I just thought we would go ahead and read all the months um, at once. February, find your flow. March, show up every single day. April, say your big dreams out loud. May is you are a work in progress. June, you're not going to run out of ideas. <laughs> That's a good one. The only thing you can control is when you start. August, do what you can and be done. One of my personal, personal favorites and a personal mantra that I live by even before I saw it in this book. I mean, I've heard it before and it's just, it's a personal mantra of mine. I'm not a perfectionist by all means. You can tell that from my videos and from my planner. I am not. I'm a just get out there, work hard, do what needs to be done, do what you can and be done. And you know, feel good and feel happy. There's a new day tomorrow. Be a beginner, but I guess you also need to remember to be a finisher. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes getting started is the hardest part. If it seems impossible, find another way. I love how she drew this maze on here. My um, nine-year-old son loves mazes. So when I show him this, he's going to be obsessed with it. I'm definitely going to have to give him this page and he's going to do the maze. I love that. She is so creative. Okay, November, only action drives change and December. Expand your comfort zone. That's one I need to remember because I really like to stay in a comfort zone. I really like to be comfortable, but I constantly have to remind myself that no growth happens there and that is not what life is about. All right, so let's flip through. You saw every month you have a reflecting goal set, then you have your motivational page that you can tear out or not, and that's just blank on the back. That's the hard card stock. Then you have another really hard cardstock page that your monthly tab is hooked to. So not only are these tabs like the thickest, most durable tabs I've ever felt in a planner, like literally, this page is super thick cardstock. So man, you can use these tabs to flip and they feel sturdy as ever. They are, you are never going to have any problems with that. You can be rough on this and it will be fine. So on the tabbed page, it says date and project, and it is just a small grid page to give you room to put whatever you want to, whether it's a project, whether it's a to-do list for that month of January, whether it's things you need to remember in January, it's hooked right here on the January page. Then you open and you get your January spread. You also have your previous month of December and your next month of February down here. I just love the crisp, clean look of her pages. And so if you're someone who wants to keep it black and white, you can keep it black and white. But if you're someone who wants to decorate in color with just 
a colored pens every month, you know, or you want to decorate with stickers, it is totally open to do any of that. You want to use highlighters. That's what one thing I love about this. There is no colors competing. So you can make your month color whatever you want. And that's something I love about black and white planners like this one and passion planner. If you guys have followed me, you know that I like to assign like one color per month and I like it to be that seasonal color. And so I like that this planner leaves that open for me. And I just love the look of it. It is so easy to find a day. There's no fluff. There's not a million things to fill out. There's nothing to confuse you or clutter your mind. It's just you have some notes lines down here. So it could be monthly lists. It could be notes. It could be anything you want. And then you have your boxes up here. Now, because you have all this note space, I mean, I do have to say your boxes are a teeny bit smaller than some other 7x9 planners. Just because you, have, you do have a lot of note space. I do like the note space down here and I still feel like your box is big enough because I have written in this and planned some in my 2017. I have played a lot around with it. So I do. I like her design. I love how the month is just really big here and the year. And I, I really like, I love so much about this planner and you get your next month's numbered in a really light gray, which I like. So if you have something coming up on like the first couple days of the next month, you can see that in your last month. If there's any boxes up there, you have numbered in a really light gray also. Love that. Then you start right in into your month. Oh, one thing I do need to note, um, it's a typical Sunday start on your monthly calendar, which is like, you know, 95% of the planners that I reviewed or 98% are a Sunday start on your monthly and then on the weekly, it's a Monday start. And that is like 98% of the planners that I review. That's how they're done. Um, that's the most typical way. Her planner has no holidays written on here at all. Some people will like that. Some people won't like that. Um, I find it sometimes I am missing the holidays because I'm someone who kind of just likes to have it on here. I like to have them telling me so I don't have to remember. But then a lot of times on calendars there's so many extraneous holidays for other countries or other religions that you don't celebrate and I can totally understand how people don't want those cluttering up their calendar and so because her planner is kind of like such a blank slate and that's just kind of like the get to work book slogan I can completely see why she has left that off why it's her style that she has left off the holidays for you to put in the ones that matter to you you know, whether it be your religion, your nationality, with your country. So there are no holidays, there are no moon phases, there is nothing pre-printed on your monthly calendar or on your weekly calendar for that matter. So there is none of that pre-printed on here. You start right into your week and this is what every week of hers looks like. You have action items this week and you have three boxes. I love this. When I have planned in this, for a few weeks to test out for daily planning, those action item boxes were some of my favorite things. Because in the planners that have a list on that whole side, I would tend to just, you know, list out all the things I needed to get done that week. But I really didn't have anywhere that I put like my top three, like, and I'm big on top three things that I need to, like, these are the things that must get done this week. Let me focus on these and then get to the rest. And I love how those boxes outline that for me. I really love that. I would totally use those. I did use those when I planned in here. And then you have a section down here of graph paper. And I like that. I like how your day doesn't go to the bottom because I would totally use that for my weekly like to do's that need to get done that don't have to be assigned to a specific day. Just things I want to get done that week. I love how your days don't go to the bottom. But if you're someone who needs more room on that day and you want your day to go to the bottom, like let's say you want to record your dinner that day, you know, your meal or your exercise that day and you want it to be on that day, well, it's easy to see where that day is and you can just continue down and you could still use that for your dinner and your exercise that day and you wouldn't have to use it for extra weekly lists. So I like that it's open to use either way like that. I love how she just rotates between the light gray and the white column. I love that rotation because it easily helps you differentiate between the days. It's easy to see when you're writing and yet it's not too dark. So it doesn't clutter up whatever you want to do. 
I love how her top three boxes are at the top of her day. You guys have heard me say so many times in other planners that um, I need my boxes up here because how I use these would be my appointments or my go-to errands for the day, like my non-negotiable if I had to go anywhere or I had appointments for that day or just something like really big I had to remember for that day and get done, it would go up in here. And everything else would just be scribbled down here in no specific order. So those are really important to me and I love, love, love that they are at the top. Um, I love how it's just, it's easy to find what day you're on. Some planners, literally it's written so lightly to me or in a script that just is not easy for me to just directly look at and read. I just, I love how it's just, there's like no question. I'm on January and it's the 5th. Like, it's just boom. Um, you have room up here if you wanted to like throw your weather temperatures up here. There's plenty of room or write something up here near the day. Or if you wanted to use one of your boxes for that or even your temperatures right below the day. I just, I really like the design of her page. I know you guys have heard me say this if you've <laughs> watched my other Get to Work book videos. So every page is like that. You always have the month up here, the year, the action items, and then your weeks. Now let me show you what happens at the end of the month. Well, it depends on how it ends. Okay, well this month, oh, let's see if she changed that this year. Let me see. This month ends on the 31st. She may have changed this and she just ended right here. Let's look in February. Oh, okay, so she did do this. No, she did. So what she does then when February starts, she does give you this week pages again. So you can choose if you want to use those in January back here. They're darkened so you know you're still in the month. Or if you want to see your whole week together, then she is still giving you those pages, but they're in really light, light, light gray. So you can tell like this is your previous month and this is starting your new month of February. So you have those two choices of some people you know, would just choose not to use these end ones at all and would want to see their whole week at once. Sorry, guys. They would not want to use these end ones at all and they would want to see their whole week at once. Some people would want to use these and then just start using these and you just have that to look back on. So there's some options there. Okay, so when your month ends, she gives you um, a graph paper with this little to-do that little to-do column right there. So at the end of your month, you're gonna get that, which is just free to use however you want. On the back of that, you have these project breakdown pages, which people absolutely love, and so do I. She, in fact, sells a whole tablet on her website, gettoworkbook.com, of just these pages. So let's look at the project breakdown page. You have one per month in here. She has project, date, deadline and you have some open space here to write about it and then all the rest are labeled action items you have six bigger boxes for action items and you have six smaller boxes for action items for that project now of course this could be used for one project but it could also just be used for the month of january and like some things you want to get done in january you know, or I mean, this could be a project that you're breaking down and this could just be a list of January items. You can use it, of course, however you want, but I love that page and the way that it's designed. Then you have another graph gridded page date project at the top. And then for February, you have your reflect and goal set page right there. And that's the one we went over before last month's wins still in progress to let go of to think on to work on to complete. Okay, then you go into your February slogan, find your flow, and you always have your graph grid pages on the monthly tab. Then you're into February. So you go through the same thing in that month. She gives you the end of January like I showed you. And then you go all through February. And at the end of February, you end the same way as January. But then she's going to start you, sorry guys, they are sticking, the same way as February. You always get the last month here, but you can see your whole full week if you want to work from that. 
Okay, so you have the same stuff. February ends, you have your draft pages. Then you have your project page, another draft page, reflect and goal set. So these are in between each month. Then your slogan, and then your grid page, which is right on your tab. So that's gonna go through every single month, you guys. And like I said, these tabs are so easy to flip through. And then I wanna show you what's at the end. I've already showed you all the slogans. So you get to December of 2018. And let's go to the end of that. So December ends and she gives you all the way into January to January 6th, which, which is really nice to see that whole week. And then you have your reflect and goal set. You have, um, let's see how many pages. You have your project breakdown, and she's gonna give you a couple extra pages here. And then you have your graph, another project breakdown, graph, another project breakdown, and then a couple of just graph. One, two, three, four, five, six of the just graph with the to-dos. And then at the very end, you have your 2019 at a glance, and then your little slogan, big things happen one day at a time, and then that's it. Okay, and so there's no pocket in this planner. There is no band that comes with this planner. However, she does sell bands with um, her Get to Work book, black bands with her Get to Work book slogan on it. She sells them on her website. They're just, they're not hooked into the book. One other thing to note that is different from other 7 by 9 planners is her tabs stick out from the cover. Most covers, people like them to cover the tabs. Her tabs are not covered, um, so it's kind of like the tab is the thing that keeps you from grabbing any further, but it's not anything terrible. It's You can still hold your book just fine. You can hold your book, and these tabs are so super sturdy, you guys. I would not worry about throwing these in a bag. Um, I've never seen anyone in any video complain about these tabs having problems if they throw this in their bag every day since they're sticking out. So... The only reason I can think she left them sticking out is because you do not even have to pick up your book to look. Like seriously, you sit down with your book and I can just flip to any month you tell me to. I mean, it is like access is like right there. Like, so it's an interesting different concept from other books. I like it. I like so much about her book. There's really not anything that I would complain about. I would like a pocket. I would like a band to be hooked on, but I say that about every book. So here's her 2017 book. I just want to show you the difference in the looks real quick here. Um, you can even tell just in her tabs, her, her tabs are just darker. And then I just want to flip to a month to show you how kind of the printing just looks darker. So if you look at 2017 from last year and you compare it to 2018 from this year, I'm really not sure if on my video of my iPhone 6, if it picks this up well enough. but it is a, it's a darker print. It's a just darker, more ink. It just looks like, I like it. I like it. And on her daily pages, um, it is a teeny bit just darker and more saturated to me and just cleaner and crisper. That's the only way I can explain it. It just, it looks darker and more saturated to me and the paper looks a little bit whiter a little bit cleaner and crisper. So those are the only differences, really. Other than the slogans being different, those are the only differences I notice. I absolutely love her ruler. Her ruler is the best planner ruler of any planner I have reviewed. Better than Inkwell, better than Erin Condren. I love this planner ruler, and let me tell you why. It's easy to get in and out, but it is not um, too flimsy. It's just the right, it's, it's just right. So it's kind of like Goldilocks and just right. I love how much it sticks up. I love just the width of it. I love that there's a real ruler on it that you can use. And it actually is really easy to grab and turn to your page, but it doesn't stick out too much. I really love this ruler. So, all right. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you use Get to Workbook, if you've used it before, I'd love you to chime in below and tell us like your favorite thing about it or why you love it, um, or how long you've used it. I would love to hear about it below. And thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye guys, happy planning.